Hello from Rose, welcome to Tanks Invest, we talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's terms only. The investment you'll talk today will be 17 kth. This so is my second posting of today. Respect to recording time of 4.49 p.m. on the Eastern Time, the term country $4,242, up about 0.75% so far. On the overall crypto market, we could see that clearly on the left corner side, we just kind of trade on a sideways fashion, not really doing much, right? On the news front, I would say there is uh, some interesting news that's happened today uh, depicting around the equity market and some of the legal, um, I guess, media affectation that's been happening recently, right? As you saw earlier today, um, you know, we had some volatility in the equity market, right? We had the slight peak in the beginning of the day, right? I would say around 9.30 a.m. as the market opened all the way to around like 1.30 p.m. on the Eastern time-ish, right? And the bond yield was basically slowly normalizing, depleting a little bit, but as it hits towards noon time, it start to reverse and it start to start peaking up a little bit more and more uh, in a gradual manner, which absolutely indicates um, and drive some of the sell-off uh, across the market on the equity side, which subsequently propel um, you know, crypto to be going upward because of that anti-correlation effect that we've been talking about, right? Which is the reason why we are net-net kind of just like not doing much, right? Because uh, the bond yield has subsequently normalized um, by the end of the day, as obviously the market is closed now, uh, the last 20 minutes ago. But, but that's basically what happened today. We had some surge and then some normalization uh, in the opposite type of, um, you know, uh, dynamic you know comparing both crypto and equity and on the news front with respect to ethereum i would say there's a some collections of substantive news uh and i would say some of them are even a, a gag type of news so the first one's on market watch about three hours ago and the title is uh, really funny one of the stupidest ideas i've heard in a long time so the article on market watch is basically depicting an interview that the Robin Hood chief legal officer, and his name is Dan Gallagher, uh, asked him about his opinion on, you know, with respect to the Congress, creating a, some sort of new regulations for digital assets, right? And basically, he's saying, like, on a high level, you know, and he said this with such interesting frustration, um, I, I get you know, he's a lawyer, so I, I guess it makes sense why he would say that from his perspective. But I don't know him. I don't know his uh, representation, nor his uh, biasness, you know, towards a specific um, topic, right? But basically, he's saying that this is one of the stupidest idea that he has ever heard in this space, and I'm guessing the, the legal space, in a long time. Because, like, you know, if you talk about crypto, it's still a relatively new space. Is still nascent, um, and he's basically explaining himself that you know, with respect to this new regulations that the Congress were proposing, in theory, it will basically be doing the job that the SEC, which is the Security Exchange Commission, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission should be doing. So by in you know allowing the Congress to be initializing some sort of uh, regulations on digital assets, it's kind of like doing the same thing three times over and over again, um, which is, you know, in an operational efficiency perspective, I can resonate with Dan Gallagher's depiction that, yes, this could, you know, this might not be the smartest idea. Um, anyways. You know, this was an interesting conference, I, and I, I think you could probably find, like, a taping of this. And the, the conference that it was uh, depicting is uh, it's called the Georgetown University's Financial Markets Quality Conference that happened uh, today, early today. So, um, interesting one, uh, but it seems like it doesn't really have any specific affectation on Robinhood stocks, uh, nor did it have any... Um, you know, direct correlations to the Coinbase stock either. Um, so interesting news, but is it anything substantive? It's just, uh, I guess, like Dan just uh, releasing his uh, frustration, if you may. Um, so, subs, you know, something we, you know, is informative, but like, I, I was really hoping for more of a, 
informative or educational type of uh, explanation rather than just uh, kind of um, you know grunting and, and grieving if you may so quite interesting so next one's on market watch four hours ago talk about the worst of Bitcoin pullback may be over so this is basically talk about the technical analysis if you look at the chart right for Bitcoin we have been down we look at from the sixty nine thousand dollars we're basically down by close to about 13 to 15 percent so far from the peak right so with respect to is this the like the the worst is over we will dive into the technicals in a bit as we go through the technical analysis i would say on the high level maybe but like right now we still like um we still have some more room to run down to so we'll dive into that in a bit all right so next news is on uh, Bazinga. Four hours ago, talked about a, a rare crypto punk NFT was just sold for 137 e ETF. So this is a, again a picture that looks like um, Prince with like his like the the curly hair with like sunglasses and it's like a tan skin with like a pink background. So it was sold for 137 uh, Ethereum. So another commercialization uh, or some sort of a adoption around this uh, generative art collection if you may right and then next one is talking about uh, some venture capital activity with respect to ethereum layer 2 developer starkware value at two billion dollars following a 50 million dollar race so it seems like there's more venture capital backing with respect to the slow cultivations of this, you know, long-term value proposition of Ethereum. And it seems like another developer named Starware is, uh, you know, focusing on that, right? And this company is based out of Israel. So um, interesting to know, might be a good company to follow down the road as they further progress. And the next one is on, on Bitcoin. It's four hours, so we'll talk about more again the funding that um, you know Starkware, you know, has uh, propelled up to a valuation of two billion dollars, right? And in this article, it talks a little bit about uh, the funding round with respect to this fifty million race um, is led by Sequoia Capital, which is one of the oldest and the most reputable uh, venture capital firm uh, in the world. And the next one is on crypto uh, on Bazinga five hours ago. Talk about crypto well just moved one hundred and seven million dollars worth of Ethereum off Binance. So it seems like this is another transfer. Um, you know, Bazinga likes to do this a lot. They like to typically um, talk about how much someone transferred from one wallet to another. Just to like, it's, it's kind of like a clickbait to be honest with you. So it's not not substantive at all. Um, but again, one hundred and seven million dollars worth of Ethereum must move off of finance so okay great great for us to know so let's just dive right back into technical analysis right now uh my throat is still hurting a lot uh, i think i've been just um i think the new york weather is definitely getting colder um and and not just cold but dry at the same time that when i'm breathing uh cold air uh not not with my mouth but just with my nose um that I try to do that because like you know it filters out the dust and stuff um, like breathing with my mouth open and just like completely inhale everything um, and um, and I think I've had the bad experience of like sleeping with my mouth open before that I always wake up like with a sore throat because I've been dry the whole night so um, I, I don't know anyways let's just get get back right to the topic so right now we're up about 1.04% um, while the whole market beside Polkadot, which is kind of trading on a sideways fashion, up about 1.09% as well. It seems like we are slowly reversing. Uh, we are bouncing off of the 4,000 mark, which we got to, right? You can see that we were bouncing from the $4,066.17 mark. And right now we're reversing back up. Right now we're still at the 45 out of 70. So... In terms of risk tolerance, I would say this is much better in comparison to like, you know, previous days when we were running really high, when we were on the high level of RSI scale of 70 over 70. So right now, it's something that, you know, we appreciate. This is a buying opportunity that we're seeing in front of us right now. So Bitcoin right now, per the analyst, he said that, you know, we're down 13% from the all-time high. 
we are at the 45 out of 70 right now. So if we break that, you know, if we break the current level, we will go down to ideally first level to 56, ideally to 52, ideally to the 47, right? And I think we might have some room to run down to because the MACD is still leading down. So we don't have a, like a curvature or propensity to go up yet. So it's still, you know, you know, waiting for confirmation for reversal. So I will still probably wait off and practice patient a little bit right now. But I think, you know, in comparisons to like a couple of days ago or like a week ago, we're running really hot. I think now is a much better level to dollar cost average at contingent on us not breaking below the $58,000 level, which is the level that we've sustained so far. Dogecoin right now uh, is basically uh, hovering in between, um, and I think the better level to dollar cost average would be somewhere around like the twenty three to the twenty cents level. Cardano right now we are you know, I think current level is not a bad level to buy it, but we did form a death cross. So ideally, I would probably wait until we come back down to the one forty six, right? We are at the thirty six on the scale right now, so it's not a terrible level. Um, but we've seen us depleting way like further down before and I think you know in the absolute bottom right now in the near term Let's say we have a flash crash like tomorrow or something like that 172 is a not a bad dip, right? I think right now is actually a pretty good setup. So Cardano is actually a good buy right now per the technicals right now Solana right now is uh, still forming a you know downward uh, pressure uh, It's still you know in the bearish states um, right now with the 49 or 50 out of 70 so ideally buy it somewhere again right as we deplete lower to the 133 to the 113 from here sorry I'm just uh, my throat is not feeling so well so I'm trying my best to talk uh, without like hurting myself so right now XRP is um, it's basically uh, hovering between the 110 and 101 level so ideally, you know, uh, as we deplete further back down to below 35, I think the 105 is not a bad level in terms of like the median of risk tolerance level. Polkadot right now, it's uh, up about 1.31%, 41.11 out of 70. So I think uh, ideally if wait for us to cool down a little bit. Again, right to the 30, 31, uh, all the way to 25 would be much more logical to dollar cost average at. Algorand is selling off um, and I think ideally again right I think right now is a dip actually um, around 160 to 150 would be a good dip so I think 165 is not a bad level we're at the 38 out of 70 right now so it came true with respect to where we're talking about so Algorand is actually a, not a bad level to incur some risk right now Shiba Inu right now uh, again right do the same thing to uh, the 2750 to the $900 level to be uh, more of an ideal level dollar cost average. Oh my god, my throat is killing me right now. Oh, so with respect to risk management level, again, right, I have made some revisions across the spectrum for all of the crypto assets that we see in front of us. So feel free, you know, use this as a reference. You know, um, I know that it's, uh, it's not the most intuitive way of thinking when you see we're like selling down why should i be buying it's because like the risk is lower so whenever the risk is lower the price is lower right whenever the price is high the risk is also higher right so i think right now it's uh the opportune time is coming which is something we appreciate if you want to build that for a long term right in comparisons to like a couple days ago or like last week we're running really really high now we're much more depleted so i'm you know i'm never like biased no, am I trying to pump the market? I'm just speaking what the chart tells us, right? So if this is helpful, I'm actually going to go drink some water uh, and cool down a little bit. I'm really, really, uh, I'm in pain a little bit. So hopefully, you know, my uh, my work is helpful. And I, I you know, bought my mom uh, actually a fleece uh, from um, from like a sporting good company. Uh, and I think she'll, she'll actually appreciate it, you know, during this winter time in New York. Um, and uh, hopefully she'll like it. You know, it's a very New York color, like just black on black on black. Um, but I think I foresee us going to be traveling quite some time in the near future. Uh, so having like a fleece that you could carry on, you know, with, you know, in airports to 
just walking around like running groceries i think that's something that is quite you know versatile and also it's like i, I do like it uh i personally have one myself so i do have good experience with it and the brand is called Altrax. uh if you in case you want to know um you know more about i'm happy to share more information on it but really appreciate you and stay tuned for some help take care bye